Christine's work is special international law because she brings a feminist perspective to look um, at international law. She's been groundbreaking in both working as a um, international lawyer across um, a range of different issues, but particularly focusing on the feminist side of international law, looking at the gendered aspects of international law, challenging international law, and requiring really that women's lived out experiences are integrated within that framework. She was a pioneer in international law um, in the late 80s and early 90s. There wasn't really a discourse of women's rights in international law. Arguing that women should be there in international law got greeted with derision, got greeted with that is completely irrelevant, that's not what international law is about. Um, so just even getting past that first step was, I think, the hardest part. And you know, now, yes, we have documents like the Istanbul Convention. 20 years ago, that would, violence against women as an international law issue just simply wasn't thought of. Now it's there as an international treaty. That is, as a lawyer, a major change. She's used international law mechanisms um, and international law processes um, to address the um, harms done to women um, and to try to improve the lives of women. One example of that would be, for example, the Istanbul Convention, where she was the gender advisor, the expert consultant to the Council of Europe, and she um, helped the Council of Europe develop a convention that will be binding on states, will impose legal obligations on states to protect women from violence, to prevent violence against women, and to prosecute and punish perpetrators of violence. She was there shaping the discussion as it went, went on. And when governments were unwilling to abide by international law, unwilling to say, yes, we commit to giving money to eradicate violence against women. She was there reminding the states who were there that they really needed to abide by international law and her expertise, it's, it's at her fingertips. The Istanbul Convention is the first time that we have a European convention specifically addressing violence against women. So what it does is impose legal, legally binding obligations on states to tackle violence against women. What we're saying here is that the state is responsible when the harm is committed by private actors, husband, partner, person in the street, whoever it might be, but the state is responsible for that framework within which those actions can take place. And if the state doesn't make appropriate steps to ensure protection, etc., then the state is responsible. So it's a shifting from what we call a vertical relationship of international law to a horizontal one. So conceptually, it's big. The work that I was doing um, at the United Nations in 2009 was about the exclusion of women from post-conflict transitional justice um, schemes, in particular, issues relating to how economic and social rights post-conflict are an integral part of ensuring justice for women. She's been very influential in the women, peace and security agenda at the United Nations. Um, that, the, the, the core of that centres around recognising the importance of women participating in um, peace agreements, peace negotiations post-conflict but also recognising the particular harms that women suffer in conflict. International law relating to the inclusion of women has to be made effective at the domestic level. It's in national courts, it's in national processes that the international standards are going to be given effect. Argentina was looking at how access to justice could be improved for women. And so the work that I did involved writing a detailed paper explaining obstacles, of access, obstacles to access to justice um, for women and then working with prosecutors and judges in Argentina to show the linkage between the international standards and the domestic reforms that were needed.
human trafficking is is very often perceived as being essentially an issue around criminal justice um, or around immigration issues, around security issues. The work that we were doing was to try to put the human rights of the victims at the core of any um, processes with respect to human trafficking. So to try to move from a criminal law oriented model to a human rights centered model with respect to trafficking was what we aimed at. Um, the, I was part of a working party on human rights guidelines, essentially, for the victims of trafficking. So we set out the ways in which human rights should be put at the centre of um, procedures with respect to victims of human trafficking. She challenged the international legal system. She said that we have to look at this, we have to integrate women's lives and women's experiences within this system. We have to recognise the gendered nature of international law and seek to change it. You both use it, use it and use the principles, but also seek to reform it. So I think her legacy will be um, what she aspired to do, which was she helped redraw international law.